failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton continues her complaint uh, and whine tour, unable to apparently let go of her loss to President Trump in 2016. As I've been telling candidates who have come to see me, you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. I think she was channeling, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Bernie Sanders, uh, who she stole that election, did she not? Clinton's comments in Inglewood, California, coming in front of a crowd that paid as little as, are you ready for this? $2 a seat. Now, the, the two folks you sit there, I mean, they're worth over $100 million, maybe $200 million, and they want somebody's $2 to have an evening? I, I mean, that's astonishing. Uh, joining us tonight, Steve Bannon. He's the former White House chief strategist, former senior counselor to President Trump. He is a great American, and it is good to see you. Thanks for having me, Lou. Let's start with, I mean, Let's ignore the Clinton, shall we? Can we do that? I think it's pretty easy to do. Uh, let's start with this the, president. The grifter, the grifter tour. The grifter tour. I like it. At two bucks a throw. Uh, Cheap at any price. <laughs> yes, you got it. Uh, this, this president uh, standing up today and saying to, to, to Xi Jinping that, you know, you can renege, you can do whatever you wish, but there will be consequences. Uh, this is the man we elected period. This is a great president. Well, I think you compare and contrast Hillary Clinton to what Donald Trump... I happen to think today was the most important day of Donald Trump's presidency. Really? Yes. Listen, he's president of the United States because of the rejection of working-class people and middle-class people about managed decline of our country at the hands of people like Hillary Clinton. The Clinton Global Initiative, the, you know, the, the whole Clinton apparatus, these globalist and elitist we're very comfortable with the managed decline, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the rise of China. And Donald Trump confronted that, particularly in the upper Midwest. Mm -hmm. This is the reason he won states like Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. People understand, like J.D. Vance, the great sociologist right. who wrote the book Hillbilly Elegies, the factories went to China, the jobs went to China, and the opioids came in. And so I think Trump understands that tariffs are more than, more than taxes. They're about self-empowerment of the working class. Today, he said that President Xi and the Chinese apparatus, which continually, whether it's Clinton, Bush, or Obama, mm -hmm. the permanent political class, they've tapped along, reneged on every deal they've had. Trump said, I'm not going to do this. You're not going to come back and retrade us. I'm going to hit you with the tariffs. And I think this is a very big week in American economic history. Uh, I couldn't agree with you uh, more. Uh, and to to think the the opposition that this president uh, has faced uh, the uh, uh, the uh, unregistered foreign agents that are represented on Wall Street uh, the Koch brothers uh, the Chamber of Horrors uh, the Business Roundtable U.S. multinationals and their lobbyists the idea that uh, this president has to contend with them while he's also negotiating with Xi Jinping uh, and his emissaries. It is, it's stunning that a president has had to face this kind of opposition, this kind of disloyalty, and, and an active uh, conspiracy to overthrow his presidency. Let's, let's leave aside the nullification project for a second. Let's just talk about China. In China, the resistance he's had from, from the IR department of the Chinese Communist Party is Wall Street, the investor relations the party, the lobbyists of corporate America, and the pressure on President Trump has been relentless. And it's all the fear project, just like in Brexit. It's the fear project, project fear that if you don't actually get a deal that's just, a, just about buying more soybeans, you're going to have a collapse of the stock market uh, and economic catastrophe. President Trump has stood up against that. President Trump says, no, this is an economic war. We're going to have fundamental structural change in the state capitalism that China has. China has this system of state capitalism. We are going to get changes on forced technology transfers, subsi subsidies to state-owned industries, intellectual property. These are deep issues. And, and here's the reason this treaty broke down this week. They had the Belt and Road Initiative a week ago. They had 40 companies there, they, 40 countries. They say, hey, we're doing fine. Do we need the Americans? And all of a sudden, you saw them coming back on what Trump had negotiated to say, we're going to put all this out to the public to see, particularly the Chinese public. Remember, this is not against the Chinese people. President Trump is actually assisting the Chinese people. This is against this radical cadre of the Chinese Communist Party. And I got to tell you, 
Their supporters on Wall Street and their supporters in corporate America should be ashamed of themselves of the pressure they put on the uh, president of the United States. Today, over the weekend, he said no way, and today he, he hit the bid. There are so many of the elites in this country, the political elites, business elites, who should be ashamed of, their, uh, of themselves because in betraying President Trump, they betrayed their country, and they continue, they persist. Uh, and to watch what the Dems are doing on Capitol Hill, the nonsense of, of even thinking of holding Attorney General William Barr in contempt. This president is under assault still by the deep state, the radical Dems, and, of course, the, the unbelievably petty and persistent uh, establishment of both parties. Well, here's a, the opposition party media, the mainstream media, and what I call the nullification project. I don't call it the deep state. It's in your grill. It's in your face. It's not deep. I mean, they're right there. And I think this, this project, the Russia thing's a sideshow to a sideshow. The beating heart of the problem we have in the United States is this geostrategic uh, struggle we have with this radical cadre, the Chinese Communist Party, and our, our position with China in the 21st century. Donald Trump has understood that you've talked about this for 20 or 30 years. Trump has been a follower of yours. Donald Trump came into this thing with very set ideas. That's why he was able to go up to the upper Midwest and working class people said, hey, I understand what that guy's saying. And, and, and Hillary Clinton never went there and never mentioned it because she's a globalist. You've got this thing reversed. I'm a follower of President Trump's. And yeah, but you I have been talking. You. You've been talking about this for a long well, time. You you, know, you've been on. There's this an old saying: "Talks cheap." What this president is doing? Oh, the actions is he's taking. Extraordinary. Is, by the way, and, and the pressure and he's historic. had. The pressure he has had, and I think that's why that tweet the other day. Here's the key thing: the Chinese have done what they've always done to American presidents, and he said, "No way, you're not going to retrade us. This deal is going to be out in the open." And he, hey, here come the tariffs. Here come the tariffs, and uh, here comes America, thanks to a fella named Trump. Steve Bannon, great to see you. Come Mr. back Dobbs, soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bannon.